My power level is only at 80%. <laughs> I love that Tagoro Yu Yu Hakusho reference. That was marvelous. Great job right there. I did not expect a freaking Yu Yu Hakusho anime reference or manga reference in this series. That was a great job. And there was other great references I just cannot believe they would put in this episode. And they had more JoJo Bizarre Adventure references. So, anyways... This episode was on the weird factor. Very, very weird. I mean, for me, a person that's seen some crazy stuff, and probably a lot of people right now that's watching this review, I'm going to have to say this was definitely a very outlandish episode. I mean, we got Bukake, we got freaking Yaoi, Pocky kissing, and we have freaking deprived forced mountain climbers that need a girl. Oh yeah, and, and uh, forget that uh, Hata has a freaking harem with uh, four girls and a bath scene. So yeah, this episode was a very good episode. It, it wasn't bad. It actually was a lot better. I think this is one of the best episodes they've truly had in this series. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I'm gonna say, this episode had a lot of funny freaking moments. I mean, the way they managed to place in the actual references in certain times, especially with the what the hell is going on and going into each scene to the next set of characters being introduced, was really well done. I mean, it felt like the pacing wasn't off this episode, which is good, so it progressed in a great direction. Now, I, I will say, the Bukit scene right at the beginning of this episode, that was a very disturbing disturbing freaking section, okay? That was probably more disturbing than the Yaoi kissing scene. I want to be completely honest right there. That Bukit scene, when you see them just spraying freaking yogurt on each other, I was like, oh, I just, it just, I, that was so wrong. And then you got the freaking Suzuki just saying, you need to spray it on his glasses. Get it on his glasses. I was just, just, it was funny. I got a freaking good laugh. I was more amazed by the shock factor of something like this being in this anime. I didn't expect something like this. I and mean, then, you know, it completely changes pace of the entire, I guess, perversion right there over into the forest girls. And we find out that Hata is a player and that he was actually baffing with Minori and her three other sisters until 8th grade. You... Oh, I am just... I, does anyone else in the audience right now want to strangle him? I, I'm, I'm just going to ask that real quick. But I will say... The way they placed the comedy was freaking hilarious. It didn't feel like dull comedy. It managed to get my attention to where I had some really good honest laughs. But let's be honest here. All of us probably had the what the fuck face the entire episode. Let's just be completely honest there. I know I was dumbfounded what I was seeing this entire episode. I mean, there's just so many shocking factors about it. I mean, the f uh, top four farming kings or whatever, okay? The farming kings. That's... It's not original, okay? We've had four heavenly kings, four polar bear kings, whatever you want to call it, a different type of anime. But... It's interesting that the way they introduced them, and they introduced only three this episode, and supposedly there was one that was going to be introduced this episode, but they decided to cliffhanger it right there when we're about to get introduced. It looks like a female character, and they're going to save it for next episode. Most likely that character is going to be absolutely boss. So I felt like this episode was one of the best episodes yet, and let's actually talk about the yaoi scene. The yaoi scene. Okay, now, I will say I love the entire thing where he says, Yes, I am! And he, he just does that, and you see the manga freaking novel, like, thing right beside him, along with just the way he acts, the way he's drawn right there. It looks like the animation quality just completely went up. It was absolutely hilarious, and I will give them props on that, the way they drew that. I will say the yes, I am, I thought he was going to be just a player against, you know, Ringo. But when we seen him turn around and want to actually have a challenge with Hata, with Pocky, and then you see that scene. I was like, oh my god, this is a Fujishi scene that of anime. I'm like, oh, please tell me I'm not watching what I think I'm watching. I thought I was watching Free for a second or something like that. This episode, besides certain weird moments, it was a decent episode. And I feel like if they could keep this level of comedy, along with the animation style, with the character development, the introduction of new characters that will mix up the entire atmosphere of the series, I feel like this series will have a lot going for it. Sadly not, though, I'm not going to have to take this anime seriously because I just can't. And I don't think anyone really should because this is an anime most likely you should just turn your brain off to and watch because there's just so much random crap from each scene to each scene. So far, though, I think one thing I need to cover at the most was the anal BB. What the hell kind of naming is that? I, I, I don't even want to probably begin to what the actual initials in a perverted way. Okay, let, let's just do it anyways. Anal BB. Okay, let's see here. The B, Buka Kit, and then B, uh, BL. We know what BL is, so I, I'm going to say that's what it stands for. And that's pretty freaking messed up if you think about it in a logical sense like that, the way we saw this episode progressing into. So anyways, this is going to be the end of my anime review on No Run this week. Tell me what you think about this episode. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? And, you know, honestly, I, I liked it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. Y'all wonderful day or not, wherever you live. Please stay safe. TV out.